Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Today I am working on an off-the-board project, and that means it's been pulled from Pinterest. And my inspiration is this pin from Studio Calico, and I loved how they used the thickers um, surrounded by a word of thickers. So I have several packs of thickers that are um, missing or not missing because I used them that <laughs> no longer have A's and E's available and um, they're getting kind of down there into what they do have so I decided I wanted to go ahead and try and use those up so I pulled this letter Z and I am mixing up my gesso right there and actually that's like a super thick gesso and it dried out and it's it's not even that old so I don't know what the heck happened to it but um, it has been sealed so I just wanted to see how well these thickers would take the gesso because these are foam thickers. They're not the chipboard thickers and they're not the foam with chipboard on top. They are just straight up foam thickers. And so um, I let it dry overnight and kind of just went back to it to see how it how it did. And it took it just fine. So I decided I was going to go ahead and go with it. Um, so I have three photos of my two kids and my, one of my nephews and they are squished into this box and it's at a science center that we were visiting for school um, so it was a field trip and I'm not even really sure what the box was about at this point and I don't know if my kids will remember but I thought the photos were fun so I wanted to go ahead and use them so I decided to use the title think inside the box and normally people will say think outside the box but since they're in these boxes I wanted to go ahead and call it think inside the box. So the first part I am just figuring out what my title is and I have just enough ease to do this title. Um, other than that I don't have enough I don't have any A's um, and I only had these two E's. So and, uh, and I do have two packs of this particular font and so I figured um, I wouldn't miss using a bunch of the letters that are not really like popular letters. I mean, I, I feel sad for the letters that aren't so popular, but um, <laughs> I, don't, I mean like, you know, the Z's, the X's, but I ended up just using everything off the sheet that I could because, um, like I said, I had another pack of them, and even that pack is actually missing a couple of A's and E's. So I'm trying to get through them because I'm tired of them sitting in my stash. Um, and then I have this other set, and um, there are... I don't have the name of them in front of me. I apologize for that. But um, they kind of look like Fitzgerald, but they might not be. Um, but they're all uppercase and very slim. And as you can see there, there's not a whole lot left. I have like one S and some Q's and P's. Uh, oh, look, I only have one I. <laughs> so I couldn't really spell anything out of them anyway. And I, I don't mind really mixing my fonts. So... Um, that is always an option, but in this case I wanted to go ahead and use them up. So you saw me put the title there, Think Inside the Box, and then I'm going to just use the rest of the thickers on these pages to fill in all of that white space. Yes, you heard that right, all of it. Um, so I'm going to put you on fast forward here in just a few seconds, and it's going to get really sped up because this process took me quite a bit of time, and I don't want you to have to sit through 43 minutes of video and that is even sped up as well. So I'm speeding you up considerably here. Um, and I'm just kind of nestling all of the letters in together. I don't want them touching each other, but I want them kind of nestled so that all of the big gaps are taken up. And it's kind of just a process of picking a letter up and figuring out does it look better at the top or towards the bottom of the page and what fits where. Um, turn them on their sides, turn them upside down, um, you know, the parts of the letters that stick out, like the swoosh on the bottom of the N, let it swoosh underneath another letter. So I'm just kind of nestling things together as best I can. And I do realize right now you're not, you can still see the words think, out, think inside the box, but they are kind of hidden in there. And that was, that was intentional. Um, I am going to throw some gesso on this and uh, and then I'm going to remedy the fact that those words are kind of hidden and just so you know my entire page is gessoed already 
on the bottom. So uh, you can see it's stuck down there on some black foam board and that black foam board is covered in packing tape and I have found this is a really useful way to do mixed media. If I put the foam board with the packing tape over it, it kind of keeps it uh, like a moisture barrier. And then I can put my paper on it and ta um, tape it down on all four sides with the blue tape. And then even if the paper gets lumpy and bumpy and ripply, if you let it dry overnight, it goes back to its original shape. Um, there is, there's no... Uh, bumps in it after having the gesso on the paper and, or anything. So what I did here is I just put more gesso into this little paint palette thing here and I'm using a sponge dauber on an ink applicator and I am just smooshing it onto the top and there you see all of the letters have gesso on top. And actually some of those letters, um, the, the ones that were the tall skinny ones, those actually had were black glittery. So I just put it right over that as well and it worked out just fine. So now I've pulled out some watercolor and I know I want to bring out the turquoise and orange in this because I have another layout that I've been working on that has those same colors and it's from this same field trip. So I want to go ahead and use the same colors so that the layouts kind of go together um, when they're in the album. So. I will put them in the album chronologically, even though I don't always scrapbook chronologically. So I, I want them to have a little bit of consistency since they are from the same trip. And I am putting the watercolor down, and then you see me spray it a little bit because um, there's not any water on my paper really, and I want that ink or the watercolor to flow a little bit more in the crevices between all of those letters. And so when I spray it with the water, it kind of just allows it to flow and move a little bit more. And I just dump the watercolor back into my palette. Um, it's going to dry, and I think that's going to, it'll be fine. I didn't want to really waste it. And then you see that strip that has like the random and sign and some, the tops of the question marks. That is where my row of photos are going to go. So. I know that's going to be covered up so I didn't have to fill it, fill that whole area in with more letters and I don't have to paint it either. So I, I do want to tell you a little bit about Off the Board. Um, a whole bunch of us play along every month, the last Wednesday in the month, and uh, we all use Pinterest pins to inspire our layouts. And this is um, a series that was started by Crystal Barrett a year ago July and she did a layout every day in July last year and this year and they were all inspired by her Pinterest board um, or a pin off of her Pinterest board so a bunch of us play along with her every month because we enjoyed the the, uh, um, the process of finding inspiration off of our boards and putting them to good use and so check out the links down below in my description box and go see what the other ladies are doing on theirs and um, hopefully you can maybe put some of your Pinterest pins to good use as well and it doesn't they don't even have to be scrapbooking related pins sometimes we use architecture we use um, uh, garden designs we use lighting designs um, all kinds of different things sometimes it's sketches sometimes it's scrap lifts you just never know what you're going to come up with. So it's, it's a lot of fun and it's really interesting to see what, how everyone is inspired by the different things that they have on their boards. So now I'm just going through and adding this orange. Like I said, I knew I wanted to use orange. Um, and I didn't really wait long enough for that turquoise to dry or teal, whatever color that you call that. So it kind of made it a little bit of a mess and I kind of had to clean a little bit of it up in between. Um, and you can see me sopping up some of the stuff. And with the gesso, as I'm sopping it up, you can see it becoming lighter. And that's because the gesso is keeping the um, everything on top of the surface. So it's not able to soak into the paper. Um, you, can, you can actually, like right now, I'm actually cleaning up some of the areas and that is because I can just take my clean brush, go in there, 
rub it around and actually lift up some of the ink or the watercolor because it is sitting on top of the paper on top of the gesso it's not just seeped into it I am just kind of like as as the two colors touched it turned this kind of weird gray grayish green color so I was cleaning up some of those areas and then putting some turquoise back in there um, in a little bit and then one other thing I do want to apologize for is if you hear any background noise um, I have our air cleaners on high right now we are really close to the SCU fire that's been going on and we were actually evacuated last week so um, just for for one of the nights but um, I'm back home at the moment and uh, the air quality here is really bad so if you hear the air cleaner in the background my apologies for that um, and I I don't have any close-ups of this at the very end and that is because all of my scrapbook layouts and albums are still packed in case we have to evacuate again so um, there's a little bit more that I actually wanted to do on this layout, but um, this is what we get. So we're doing the best we can here. <laughs> um, so now what I'm doing is I, I waited overnight, so everything dried. And um, then I went in with the Vicki Booten Art Crayons. And I'm using a light orange and then a darker orange. And I'm just kind of rubbing it gently on the top of the thickers and rubbing it around with my finger. And um, at some point, I do stop rubbing it with rubbing the crayon directly onto the letter um, so much I just kind of rub my finger over the art crayon and then put the put it down because it was starting to leave like little shavings of the art crayon on the layout and I didn't want those little shavings down in between all the letters so now you see I'm just rubbing my finger on the art crayon and rubbing it along on the letters and that is just making those letters extra bold and vibrant and you can see that there on the right hand side I really like the way that it's looking it's giving actual uh, extra dimension as well and um, I am like I said using the two different colors I've got a lighter orange uh, that, which is the one the tip is broken off of and then I've got this darker orange and I'm kind of just using them a little bit a little bit of each of them on each letter and that just kind of gives added dimension and added interest because um, it's not a very it's not flat what like one color would be so that took me quite a while to do um, and I sped that process up quite a bit um, that's why it might be a little bit jerky in the um, video so my apologies for that but Again, I didn't want you to have to sit through a 43-minute video, which is how long the video would have been if I left it at the normal speed that I normally speed it up to. Um, so this is sped up quite a bit so that you don't have to sit through this quite as long. And then once I get those done, I am going to do the same for the title, but I'm going to use a teal and black and I really really like the way that it looks at the end um, it just it just I don't know it gives it a lot of oomph and um, helps it to stand out quite a bit so here I've pulled out the other Vicki Booten art crayons I started with this light turquoise and then I went in with a darker blue and then I went in with a little bit of black and I really like how that black gave added interest and um, some of some of the blue touched some of the orange so I went back over it with orange and then I wasn't super sure if these were going to dry completely because the foam thickers are not really a porous sur surface um, I mean they're they're porous in that they're foam but they're not like you know foam that foam is kind of like that plasticky stuff it doesn't really like soak into it so I wasn't really sure how that was going to react and I knew I didn't want this stuff coming off on all my other layouts so what I did was I took a matte acrylic spray and you can get it at any art supply store Michaels um, Hobby Lobby any of those um, and I just sprayed it over the entire layout uh, with it's like a really fine mist and um, I sprayed it over the entire thing and let that dry and it worked out fine there's nothing coming off the layout anymore 
And so now I am trying to figure out what I want to do with my photos. I decide just to put them on this turquoise polka dot paper. I had considered using the floral in between and the orange and then I just decided no, nope, I'm just going to put it on the turquoise. I like the way it looks better. It's more simple. There's already so much going on. Um, you know, there's, I say there's so much going on. I haven't done any embellishing or anything like that, but you, there's all these letters and all this visual interest and texture. So I didn't really want to take away from that by adding too much more. So, um, I'm just having to piece this together because that was where I cut some letters out of for a different layout. So I just had to piece a little bit of the background together and you can't even tell when it's all put down there. I am just using uh, my pen blade to kind of score along where the tape was um, because once in a while if you're using something like gesso or acrylic paint and it goes over the blue tape when you pull it up it'll kind of like rip it a little bit so I just kind of scored along there and um, then I'm going to actually trim off those white edges and that's like an eighth of an inch on each side maybe slightly more than an eighth of an inch on each side and then I'm going to back the whole thing onto black cardstock and I like how that looks because that's going to add um, a little bit more uh, continuity with the black on the title letters so and then I also have my photos matted in black so I, I like how it looks I'm just using a little bit of water there to bring a little bit of orange down to one of the little spots at the bottom of the page that uh, was a little bit too white for me. Um, and then I went around it in black just to kind of tone down that edge again from where I cut it. I didn't want to have a lot of white left over there. So at the end of all the at the end of the day, this is a fairly simple layout with regard to how it looks visually. Um, I, there's not a lot of added embellishment other than all of those stickers. So it's not a simple layout, but it is kind of a simple layout. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, yeah, tons going on, but not like in the normal sense of. Um, you know, layers and layering embellishments and all of that kind of stuff. Now I just cut some fun foam and I stuck it into the holes underneath and I did that because I was afraid if I stuck it to the back of the photos they wouldn't line up to where those other thickers were down below um, like the and sign and um, the question marks and so I just figured if I fit them fit the foam in between the gaps there and then put my photos down and pick it up that way it would work fine. And it did. It worked out no problem. And then I know I want to use some of these uh, florals. And I actually really like the way that this looks. Um, you know, kind of like, like it is right there. But that's not what I ended up doing. <laughs> I completely changed it. But now that I see it on the screen, I really like that. So, um, yeah, I could have done that. And I would have been happy with it. But uh, what I did was I ended up get grabbing my, um, I think this is a two inch punch, maybe slightly smaller. No, it's a two inch. I can see I have it written on the back of the punch there. It's a two inch circle punch and I just punched some black circles out of there. And I'm going to tuck some of these florals and those were cut out of another paper from um, the collection. And this is uh, Amy Tan's Picnic in the Park, and if you're not familiar with it. so. Um, those were all cut out of one of the pieces of paper and they I cut them out for another project but I have a lot of them so I'm going to use them for this as well and then I thought what if I don't put florals on this because it's not really like a florally type layout so what if I put stars so I toyed with the, putting these dimensional stars that I'm punching out instead of the florals and then I thought nope I don't like the stars so I went back to the florals And then um, I will add some sequins, and that's going to come up in just a few moments. Uh, I, I may end up going back and adding a little bit more embellishments. Um, I might add some tabs 
right to the same area um, just above the circle that's that I'm working on right now and uh, tucked into the side of the photos and then below the upper circle tucked into the photos but uh, I'm not really 100% sure if I will ever actually get back to it and I can't go back and do it right now because like I said it is packed in case we have to evacuate um, all of my scrapbooks are are packed and ready to go um, and so I don't really have access to it to uh, right now so it is what it is and uh, so I'm gonna go back to adding those florals and I, I do end up liking how that looks and I, I thought this was just a fun layout and a fun way to use up a lot of your leftover thickers oh then I had to pull up that circle because I had put it on top of the um, black layer behind the photo and it needed to be underneath it so that I could actually tuck in the floral as well and I played with whether or not to put some of these little tiny flowers inside this um, the title and I went back and forth on whether I should or not and in the end I did not end up using them and I do not know why I left in stacking up all those flowers I certainly could have edited that out that was kind of a waste of your time my apologies yeah I played with those little flowers for quite a while and none of them kinda had the right leaves going the right way that I thought I would want to use them I knew if I did I wanted to have something that had a little of that royal blue in there because all of the other three have royal blue and the leaves were just not going the right direction and so I I kinda just said forget it I'm not going to and I actually kinda like just having the title bold right there and there's not going to be any journaling on this layout um, like I said I have a couple of other pages that uh, also document this particular field trip and that's where I will put the journaling um, and frankly I'm not really sure how much journaling there will be because I'm not even sure why we went on this field trip it is a science center I do know that we went with our homeschool group and I actually am going to hit up one of the other moms and find out if she remembers why we went but um, I certainly don't remember but uh, and this was years ago this these are from I think 2007 so my kids are grown now <laughs> maybe they'll remember but um, at this point I'm just gonna add these uh, uh, sequins and then I pulled some of these Tim Holtz phrases and I couldn't actually tell you what they say because I can't read it on the screen there it's so small on my screen as I do the voiceover and usually I would have the layout next to me to be able to read it to you but I don't have that option at the moment so my apologies <laughs> and then um, I am going to add a little bit of black splatter to each of the embellishment areas and uh, oh those little strips are popped up on foam that's what I'm doing there I'm just gluing um, the foam and that's just fun foam from Walmart so I'm going to add a little bit of black splatter to the embellishment areas. That's pretty much going to do it. So the best I could do for a close-up was uh, a screenshot of one of the videos here. And that is coming up right now. So that's the best I've got for you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.